Hey guys, and welcome to part two of the final July 2014 ban list talk. So, last time we go, went ahead and talked about some cards that Omega Chaos stated, and like I said, I want to go into detail about all the cards, and I want to go through all your comments, so no matter how long this takes, how many, how many parts this will be, I will go ahead and do this. Uh, you guys definitely piqued my interest, and I like to hear from you guys about some things. Like I said, you guys some, have some repeating uh comments so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh if I've already talked about it then I will you know refer back to uh previous parts but uh just continue to enjoy this little mini series inside daily duels. Like I said it won't be interrupting any uh tag videos so um you know tomorrow being Friday on Friday we're gonna go ahead and I'll be striving with Stanzi using um you know uh Quacky Quacky Mirrors, uh, that won't be interrupted, so, you know, tag videos, they're still tag videos, but whenever I have a, just a, um, just a me video, just a single talk, just me and you guys in the duel, then it will go ahead and be one of these videos until I am pretty much done going over all the cards that you guys want me to go over, and, um, if you guys missed the opportunity, because I know I kind of rushed it, I, I was like a week early with this whole, uh, uh, thing you, you don't miss your chance like I said it's gonna be as many parts as it needs to be so if you didn't get a chance to go ahead and, and comment then go ahead and comment in this video and I will come back and I will do this in a later part like I said we're gonna keep on going until my balance prediction goes up or it's time for the actual ban list so uh, today we're going to be looking at Stanzi's card so I know it's funny we're looking at we're talking about Stanzi's list and then we're gonna be you know striving with Stanzi tomorrow but Stanzi had his own list and he has a couple cards that he wants me to go ahead and talk about so I will so we're just gonna hop off into it I don't know he doesn't have many so we might be able to squeeze two people but uh, let's go ahead and start so first card heavy storm to one now you guys know that I hate back row and that I was a full on advocate for a heavy storm coming back and that it shouldn't have been banned and that no 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 heavy storm should be banned heavy storm definitely should be banned um, it pretty much promotes OTKs and I realize that now that I hate back row just as much as you but we have cards to combat that uh, as you guys know in uh, when we tag on daily duels we run royal decree and that's one of the key cards now. Uh, as long as you keep my Royal Decree at 3, then you know what? I'll just deal with it. Heavy Storm is uh, not a necessary evil. I used to think it is, but it's not. Uh, it's pretty much, it just screams, just, you know, go off with your plays. And uh, it's just, it deserved to be banned, in my opinion. And, uh, and I know, I, t I totally turned to leaf, but no. Heavy Storm, stay banned. Uh, now, since I've seen that, I was worried about how the game state would be without you, but now since you're gone, we've been okay, we've been reasonable, so definitely, uh, you can go ahead and stay banned. Sorry about that. Oh my god, oh my god, I actually just realized that I actually skipped one of the cards for Omega Chaos, and I never came back to it. So, <laughs> hold on, before we continue with Sanze, Omega Chaos, uh, you stated Fire and Ice Hands, not sure how to hit him, but they should be hit sometimes. Yes, they should. They should. They should be hit, and they should go down to two. Uh, two to lower the consistency of getting them, to lower their potency. Uh, of course, one would just be dead. They don't deserve to be banned. Two, uh, let's go off ahead and go off a set precedence and with uh, Reborn Tengu, which they are acknowledged to be the new Reborn Tengus, and let's go ahead and put them to two and see how they do. That rhymed, but two. Fire and Ice Hand, both at two. That's it. That's as far as we're going to take them. All right, so back to Stanzi. Uh, Stanzi said uh, Artifact Sanctum to one. I already said that in the previous part about uh, Artifact Sanctum. I pretty much said, if you guys don't want to go back, I pretty much stated that it's a card that will definitely be looked at to be hit when it's time to hit Artifacts, but there's still the Cash Cow Konami that's not going to be hit. Um, they still got this upcoming pack and the pack after that. Uh, to get some more support for artifacts, so until they p completely milked artifacts for all the money they can get, they're not going to hit to that. It's just like Bujin, so uh, Artifact Sanctum will stay at 3, despite being powerful enough to be put down to 1. Alright, next card that Sansi stated, Demok to 1, if Dedication Through the Light of Darkness goes to 2. Alright, well, Demok can, can, and I mean can, come back. He's, he's not as broken as he used to be. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say right now, Right now, right now, guaranteed. And I already, I'm already saying that this card should be banned. But if I, I, I know a ton of people are saying like Soul Charge should be banned, it should go down to one. If Demok comes back, Soul Charge is banned. Like that's a given. That is a given. Just being able to go Soul Charge and you know bring all your shit back and then summon Demok and grab that Soul Charge back. No, 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 no. Soul Charge will definitely be banned. Definitely banned. And uh, therefore, uh, 
if Demont comes back, then there's a lot of other cards that will definitely not come back, such as Heavy Storm, such as Monster Barn, so definitely no, no, no to that. Uh, Demont can come back despite Dedication Through the Light, because Dedication Through the Light's not a good card. For those of you who are wondering, what the hell is Dedication Through the through what through Light and Darkness? Pretty much, pretty much, it's a, a quick place spell card. It says tribute one Dark Magician and special summon one Demont from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Who the hell plays Dark Magician? <laughs> you know, like that. That's not. That's not even what you should be worried about when it comes to Demok. What you should be worried about when it comes to Demok and who will be able to pull off Demok the best, you should definitely be worried about Spellbooks. They are the, pretty much the deck that's going to be doing the Demoking. It just being able to go ahead and summon Demok off of uh, Tempest or Temperance. Temperance. You can just go Temperance, Summon Temperance, Activate Spellbook Secrets, uh, Search, Go Ahead, Temperance, Go Ahead, Summon Demon, Demon, Go Ahead and Get Back Their Secrets. Uh, that's pretty much the best play that I can think of with Demok. All the broke ass plays that uh, Demok used to do are banned. Uh, one of the key cards is banned at the time, so he's pretty much lost in his potency with his loops unless I'm missing something. He could come back. He could. Will he come back? I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt. Um, I doubt Demok will come back. And and once again, I'm gonna go off of this where Konami is in this if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. Where they do not like to rock the boat. They it's not very often, you know. And really, this ban list isn't gonna be the time to rock the boat. Definitely not. This ban list is probably gonna be one of the shortest ban lists you will ever see because it's pretty much gonna be between the United States Nationals, which is why it's July 13th because the United States Nationals are 11th and 12, so then after that you get a ban list, and, uh, like, right after Worlds, which I believe is in, like, September, so it's gonna be, like, maybe, like, a month and a half of ban list at that, so, uh, there's not gonna be a lot of cards moved, and, uh, for my ban list prediction, I'm even gonna state it on the video that, uh, some of these cards may not be hit this list because, you know, they still want to, those cards to be used for world. But, you know, after Worlds is over and, you know, we're out of that and, you know, Worlds mentality, uh, then those cards can go ahead and get hit. But, uh, definitely, uh, we're not going to be trying to shake the boat, and we're not going to try to, you know, throw Demok in the mix for for Worlds or anything like that. Definitely not. We're not going to try to shake the boat or anything like that. We're just going to keep it the way that it is for this list. So, can Demok come off? Yes. Will he come off? No. Unless I'm missing some kind of uh, loop or something, because I went to extensive looking and, you know, research to make sure that, you know, Demok wasn't broke anymore, and from what I saw, he wasn't. I mean, unless you count Soul Charge, but Soul Charge should be banned anyway, so whatever. You know, Demok shouldn't be the card that bans Soul Charge. Soul Charge is the card that bans Soul Charge. Alright, so the next card that uh, Stanzi stated was a uh, Rodic Seal of Convocation 2 1. And uh, I was gung ho for this at the beginning, and um, once again, that's another one of those cards where I think it should go down to one. I sh I I think it should. Will it go down to one? I doubt it. Um, Dragon rulers and dragon ruler esque deaths such as Herodics and uh, you know uh, mythics, etc., etc. Blue eyes. Uh, they're gonna miss the radar. They are definitely gonna miss the radar. There's a ton of decks that are above them when it comes to being top tier in this format, so uh, I think they're just going to go under the radar. I think the same thing with Mermels. They're just going to go under the radar. Now, is this a smart thing? This is this is a good thing that they're going to go under the radar? No. It's, it's, it's bad. It's bad, because if we hit the decks that are currently the top deck right now, then of course that it's so hard that they're not playable, and therefore not played. Then what decks are going to take the spot, or what decks that flew under the radar? Uh, ergo, Mermels. And Mermels, and uh, Mermels have flew under the radar pretty much since Dragon Rollers came out, they've been flying under the radar constantly and constantly and constantly. Like, it was like, Mermots came out. They're the hot shit. They're the best shit. They're whooping our ass. We want them banned. We want them hit. We want an emergency ban. We want an emergency ban list right now because Mermots are too damn strong. And then Dragon Rollers came out and then Spellbooks got their Spellbook judgment. And they were like, Mermot who? And then they, and then you know, they continue to do their shit with Dragon Rollers. And Spellbook, Dragon Rollers, Spellbook, Dragon Rollers, Spellbook. And Mermels are kind of sitting there like, eh, we're still good. We didn't get hit. We're just not as good as them. Sorry, we have a bad Spellbook and Dragon Rollers matchup. Sorry, but we're still a good deck. And then that deck got hit. And, you know, then we move on after those decks. And then we get into like that Dragon Ruler pure format where, you know, the Dragon Rollers were all at three. And that was pretty much a top deck. And Mermels are still doing well, but once again, they don't have a good Dragon Roller matchup, so they kind of flew under the radar again, and then they kind of got hit with, uh, Gund, 
And gun was that was that a big enough hit? No, of course it wasn't a big enough hit. You know, I mean, look for for goodness sakes on uh, daily duels. I still do great with the deck, and my deck version of the deck's not even competitive. The competitive version, the decks don't pop. Every once in a while, you'll see the deck pop up. Lately, you've been even seeing the deck pop up with hands. You know, Mermel hands all of a sudden. So Mermels are not bad. They're just gonna go under the radar because there's more important decks that Konami wants to hit, and they're just gonna completely forget about Mermel, and then if the decks that are currently the top are get hit hard enough, then then Mermels are gonna step up and be like, hey, forgot about us? We're still hot shit, and they're gonna slap our asses for the next couple, you know, for the next format, and then, if they continue to be the hot shit that they are, then we can go ahead and hit them. The same thing with, uh, Herodics and some Dragon Ruler variant, where you know, the Heretic's version hasn't been doing shit, you know? So, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, don't check the boat. Just leave it the way it is. And if it can, if it does do something, we can address it when it comes up. But definitely, Heretic's, Dragon Rollers, and Mermails haven't done enough this format to really warrant being hit on this list. And I was gun-ho. You know, I've been, you know, editing my ban list as time has progressed. And I know Abyss Fear has been sitting in that one position for Kuma on my list. But then, I thought about it, and just like I'm just saying right now, I thought about it. They're going to miss. They're going to miss. Should Abyss Fear probably go down to one? Yeah, it should. It should. Mermails should get hit. They're still too powerful in my opinion. They're still too powerful. They should still get hit. Will they get hit? No, they're just going to miss the radar. So, like I said, for my balance prediction, it's going to be as close as to what I think Konami is going to do as possible. So, you know, I don't think Konami is going to do the Abyss here, so why should it be on there? So, no. Uh, next, uh, Gear 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 2 2 along with Abyss Fear. I already stated Abyss Fear and I already talked about Gear Gear Gear. Uh, Gear 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 is still too powerful to even be at 2. It should be at 1. A card that powerful should be at 1. Lower the consistency. That way, it's kind of just a win condition card. You know, you got your cards that you pull off and you pretty much win. You put in the same boat. It's kind of like rekindling because, you know, when you play rekindling, you're going to go off. So when you play gear, you're, you're going to go off. And sometimes uh, that's as much as you get. Even getting going for a gear gun X is just a really powerful play. So uh, gear, gear, gear should be at 1, not 2. And Bisphere will probably stay at 3 despite it should be going down, but it won't because it'll miss the radar. So I talked about that as well. Uh, next, you said the Dragon Rulers banned. Uh, I already talked about that. I think they, I think that they should be banned. Are they going to get banned? No. That, that's as far as I'm going to take it. Uh, if you want to go, want me, want to hear more detail, go ahead and watch the part one. And I'll go into more detail about that. Uh, next card, Reckless Greed to two. If Reckless Greed was ever going to get hit, it should be at one, and at that point, it would just be. And my point, in my opinion, if Reckless Greed went to one, it would get more play at one than it would at three, just because Reckless Greed is still a powerful card. It's still a powerful card. Even at one, it's still a powerful card. Being able to play Reckless Greed and draw two and be two turns ahead of your opponent despite skipping your draw phase, as long as you're set up enough, um, you don't care. You do not care. And just having the ability to stack and go activate three Reckless Greeds, draw six, and only skip two draw phases is just another thing. Uh, putting Reckless Greed down to two wouldn't really resolve that issue, and that's one of the things that we're pointing our finger at when it comes to Reckless Greed being such a powerful card, is that <coughs> you can activate multiple. So you can still, if you even at two, you can still go activate two Reckless Greeds, draw four, and only skip two draw phases. Therefore, being four turns ahead of your opponent. Being four turns ahead of your opponent is game changing. It can change whether you win or lose by being four turns ahead of your opponent. You know, I only got to skip two draw phases. So if anything, Reckless Greed should be at one, not two. But will it go down to one? No. It's it, it's gonna miss. It's another one of those cards that's gonna miss the radar. Definitely. Uh, it used to be, you know, hot shit. It used to be hype. It used to be hobiting, hobiting, hobiting. That was the hot shit. And then when we went into this slower format where, you know, hats started appearing with the artifacts and Madochi, we started going to this slower format where, you know, Reckless stopped being played. Reckless was a $5 card. It used to be five freaking dollars. And then people started playing it and then it went back down to like a couple of cents. So um, it just kind of lost its flair. And uh, can it will, it, will it pop up again? Yes, it probably will. Probably will. You know, we'll realize that, you know, that we're going to this fast aggressive format again and Reckless is being played along with Upstart, and then we'll want to point our fingers again, but we'll point to it and we'll deal with it when the problem comes. Uh, Reckless isn't one of the cards that we should be addressing this format, and I do believe that should be at one, but will it go down to one or two? No. And the last card that Stanzi wants to talk about is Supply Unit 2-1. Uh, Supply Unit's not out yet, <laughs> uh, and it... And we, once again, we'll address that problem. We're not really for these preemptive strikes, and Konami's not for these preemptive strikes. They're more of it like deal with it when it becomes a problem. 
So they will continue to just, you know, they'll release it. And we're not even guaranteed to know that we're getting supply unit or not. We, do not, we don't even know if it's going to be in that structure deck. So, you know, we'll address it when we get to it. If, it, if it's a problem, and I definitely feel like supply unit is a very powerful card, and I do believe it should be at one, but... You know, we gotta let it, you know, do its dues before we hit. We gotta let Konami go ahead and put one in each structure deck, and then you go buy three structure deck or starter decks, and then you get three supply units, and then you slot them in your deck, and then Konami makes a lot of money before we even think about addressing the supply unit. So, supply unit, despite uh, it being a very powerful card that I, in my opinion, should be at one, it's we're gonna stay at three until it becomes a problem. And uh, when it comes out and it's a problem, and then Konami makes all the money, then we can hit it. So, no preemptive strike, no preemptive strike. All right, well, this went on a little bit longer than I thought it was, so um, we're already at 15 minutes, so I'm actually going to go ahead and call it. So uh, well, I guess there'll be a part three, I'm not sure, and we're still breaking it down to nitty-gritty. So like I said, we're going to continue this part by part every time there's a single video until we finally get it done. And we are finally just finished with, um, you know, talking about these cards. And then we can go ahead and do the balance prediction. But like I said, if you guys haven't commented already, be sure to comment in the comment section uh, below any th other cards that you want me to talk about that I've missed or I haven't talked about already. And I will be sure to get to it in a later part. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is really fun. I really enjoy these, uh, these uh, balance talks. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. And I will see you guys tomorrow starting with Stanzi. And then after that, it will be, you know, owning with a mega cost. So I guess the next part, part three, will be on Sunday with plus one fire fist. So I guess I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.